Readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. And a huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Thank you to the Pit Fighters, the First Swords, and all of the Bright Stars. Truth and Courage. Hello and welcome back to for the very first time to the channel. I am Will and today I... I'm on my own. If you've been following the channel recently, you would have seen that I have been away at uni and my appearances have been a little bit sparse, unless me being hidden in disguise as a hobbit or acting as if I'm in Peaky Blinders counts in the corner of the screen. But Ed and Sadie have been doing some videos for the channel. It's been awesome to hear what Sadie's been reading and I'm getting that quiz ready for Malice by Papa Gwyn that she's now read. So yeah, Sadie, the quiz will be ready soon, but... So they've talked about what they read in January and they've talked about kind of their reading plans. And today I'm going to be talking about what I read in January and February. Um, I've read a lot, but it feels like not much when looking in the books that I'm about to talk about because at uni, a lot of the texts I've read have been like, I've read what feels like a hundred academic essays and papers. And also many of the texts I've read, I've read at a minuscule pace writing notes and highlighting basically every single word where I should probably be a bit more efficient with that but yes I've been reading very very slowly but so how has my reading for 2024 looked so far so overall um I've encountered some incredible books and some books that are going in my favorites of all time but we'll get to that shortly the first thing that I read in 2024 was kicking it off and yeah, not physically as Ed always makes a joke of, but kicking it off with a bang. We have The Battle of Maldon, the translation by Tolkien. So this is an Anglo-Saxon text and it is about the historical battle of Maldon. And it is told brilliantly, it's about loyalty, uh, about duty and about sacrifice as well and kind of heroism intertwined with tragedy. And I really loved Tolkien's translation. I've read a previous translation before, but this time from Tolkien's own take on it and anything by Tolkien I am there and the Battle of Morden was no exception and I really love this translation and I highly recommend there's often this misconception that I'll talk about again later with kind of old English old Norse texts that oh they must be really like incredibly hard to get into and understand but that really is not the case I find with things like the Battle of Morden, Beowulf and a lot of the sagas that I'll talk about later that they're actually very easy to, they're very accessible, very easy to understand. They're not there to kind of blow the minds out of people, but equally there is a lot to dive into. And it's really interesting learning what is in many ways such an alien kind of land, looking at kind of uh, the values and the lifestyles of people a millennium ago. Uh, so it's very interesting kind of looking at their outlook of life as well, which adds a little bit of spice to the reading experience. But yeah, so I kicked 2024 off with the Battle of Morden. And then next up, I read The Veluspa, which is another thing that I've read for my uni course. And this is um, actually very complicated, so very different to what I talked about before. Uh, I found The Veluspa very interesting. Um, uh, it talks a lot about Ragnarok and a lot of kind of the Norse tales that we know of. But intertwined with it is about a thousand uh, references that I did not understand. Uh, so I had to do a lot of research and I was stopping and starting quite a bit, but I really enjoyed it. And another bit for my epic and legend of literature module at Durham Uni uh, that I really enjoyed. And then next up, I have a short story called Youth by Joseph Comrade, which is in, bang, in here alongside with Heart of Darkness, which I'll talk about later. But Youth is a short story, which is about, there's a group of people kind of a bit older and they're recounting kind of stories of their past. And a man talks about kind of this doomed ship that he was on called the Judea. And so it's about what happened. And it's quite a haunting tale, very short. I found it was interesting, engaging, but it, I wasn't really thinking about it a lot afterwards, so it didn't really have a lingering impact, uh, which I was expecting after having read Heart of Darkness before. Now, but Joseph Conrad, really great writing style, and it was an engaging reading experience, so it was a good read, but probably one that I won't think about much in the future. And then, what else do I have for January? So my eyes are absolutely awful, so I'm staring at my screen over there. Next up, and the last read for January, was Bleak House by none other, none other than Charles Dickens. This is a huge, huge book, I think a thousand pages, and it took me quite a while to get through. It was weird, I enjoy Charles Dickens's writing style, but at times it felt a bit too dense, and it took a while for the story of the characters to really 
hook me. And so I really enjoyed this beyond the midway mark where kind of a criminal aspect came into this. And I found that really engaging, kind of putting together the pieces, solving the mystery. That was done absolutely superbly. And then after I read Bleak House, I also watched the BBC, I think it was BBC, adaptation about 10, 15 years ago uh, with Gillian Anderson in it. And I found it to be the exact same. The first half of the programme was, was good. There's some good character moments. Charles Dance is brilliant in it. But then after the midway mark, it suddenly just kicked off, ramped up a pace and became even better. And so it is really a tale of two, two halves, not a tale of two cities. That was an awful, awful attempt of a joke by me. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, yeah, it really was kind of a tale of two halves with the bleak house. Um, I enjoyed the overall concept. We've got this law case, which is kind of sucking people in. And it's a story with a lot of kind of messages as well, didactic messages of kind of uh, the... The worries and the temptation of avarice and the effects that has on the human mind. But yeah, Bleak House, I probably wouldn't have spent that much time reading it and I probably wouldn't have continued on if it wasn't kind of necessary for my uni reading this as is the theme with many of these but yeah i'm i'm happy i read it and it's kind of one of those that is you have to read it at some point in your life and so i've got that ticked off now so that is the reading for january overall a solid month um nothing other than the bottle of Malden blew me away but yeah it was a solid month good way to kick 2024 off. Oh, i've already said kick it off four times already people must be so bored of me just using the same phrases over and over and over again. I'll try and mix it up a bit. But now getting into what I read in February. And so picking this up again, I read Heart of Darkness. I've read Heart of Darkness before. And when I read it then, I thought it took me a little while to get into. And then from the second half, basically what I'm saying about Bleak House, but this is within 150 pages, so a lot quicker process. Uh, but from the second half, I found it utterly brilliant, haunting, terrifying, and um, very different from what I expected the first time I read it. When I read this again in February, I enjoyed the first half far, far more. I think with that kind of retrospection and that, that, that dramatic irony, knowing of what is coming, I thought it was much better because this isn't a linear story. Um, where most books you have a drive of what is the character aiming for. With this, because it feels a bit dreamlike and with those haunting horror aspects, of Heart of Darkness that I'm sure everyone knows, even if they've not read it. I found that you kind of lose that kind of drive, but I'd already accepted that on the second read, and so it was much, much better. And uh, yeah, I'll be reading this again in March. And yeah, I really enjoyed it, but I'm not reading it again because I loved it so, so much. But I've chosen this to be one of my exam texts. So reading it again with uh, a fine tooth comb and a magnifying glass highlighting what is relevant. But yeah, Heart of Darkness, great way to start February, not kick it off this time. And then next up, I have The House of the Golden Door by Elodie Harper. This is book two of the Wolf Den trilogy. And oh my goodness, one of the best sequels I've ever read, one of the best books I've ever read, one of the best explorations of character relationships I've ever read. Everyone, pick this up, pick book one up, pick the whole series up. I'll be reading book three very, very soon. But House of the Golden Door, our main character, Mara, finds herself in a very different position than she's in in the Wolf Den. And so I was a little bit not worried, but I was tentative thinking, is this going to be as good as book one when it is going to, has to be such a different story because of where the character finds himself? But I should not have doubted Ella D. Harper. I apologise for doubting her for a single second. This is even better than the first book. The character relationships, they continue, they're explored brilliantly. Um, there's absolutely chilling characters who you hate. There's ones that you're terrified of. And there's characters that you love and there's a whole mix in the middle. I love that every character is fully fleshed out. They've got their own motivations and desires and you really can't trust anyone. There's constant tension, even in the kind of the quieter scenes. L.D. Harper does a great job of having the really fast paced moments, but also having moments to slow down. But you feel still feel the stress and the tension of the characters. This isn't an easy, lighthearted read, to say the least. But yeah, everyone, I really highly recommend The House of the Golden Door. This is also Sadie's favourite book of the trilogy and she also loved it and ed said it's a brilliant book as well so it's got the full brothers gwyn uh, approval <laughs> seal of rating here and so yeah big five out of five stars for me and i'm going to be talking about this book a lot throughout the year i'm sure when we talk about our favorite reasons of the year so far and i have no doubt i'd put a lot of money on that this is going to be in my top 10 reads of the year at the end of 2024. Ah, it's weird to be talking about the end of 2024 already, but yeah, that is my bet for the end of the year. And what do I have next? Another fantastic read. I have a saga, and this is Egil's Saga. 
So you can find this in the sagas of the Icelanders. And it is one, another one, no surprise here, that I've had on my reading list for a uni module. And this was absolutely brilliant. It is a family saga about kind of the, the rivalry between this family and then also the kings of Norway. And so it's a lot deeper than that. But Egil Saga, I loved the characters. They're very uh, dynamic and engaging. And Egil as a central figure is just absolutely brilliant he does such random stuff like he's got a bit of a temper on him um which when you hear about him as a child and it, is, it does blow your mind slightly but it's kind of you just take it in your stride and i absolutely loved this it is written just brilliantly where it's very entertaining but the, you've got kind of this story of who is seen as a hero but he's more of what I found fascinating is Egil is more of an anti-hero. And I know I won't go into why because obviously spoilers and this is not a spoiler channel. But yeah, he's an anti-hero, very different from characters such as Beowulf, who we will know from kind of this time period and kind of the stories that have uh, carried on through the generations. But I highly recommend Egil Saga, especially if you kind of want to get into some of this, this older Norse text and Anglo-Saxon texts. And uh, I think Egil Saga is a brilliant place to start and one that I found very accessible, very engaging and very entertaining as well. And so another brilliant read for February. What a month of reading it was. And then next up I have, speaking of brilliant books, Wrath by Papa John Gwynn. So obviously I've read these about 17 times before, but I listened to them via Audible for the first time. And Damien Lynch is a brilliant narrator. In Malice, it did take me a little while to get used to some of the accents because obviously living in the house of Papa Gwynn, these characters feel so vivid that you've, we've got our very specific kind of imaginations for each character. So it did take a little while to kind of accept some of the choices that Damien Lynch made. But after a while, it was just... It was just brilliant. And I don't think other people will have that trouble. I think they'll be right in there from the very beginning. And his range of accents really does just make every character stand out in what is very important when there's a huge cast of characters. But Wrath, one of the best battles ever. No one can convince me otherwise. It's fantasy. It's epic. Papa Gwyn does a brilliant job. I'm not biased at all. Does a brilliant job of kind of wrapping up these arcs that have carried on through... It must be 2,000 pages, including Wrath. And it makes me cry so much. I looked very strange when I was walking down the street on a nice uh, on a nice walk on a sunny day, and I had tears throwing down my cheeks. So yeah, I probably looked a bit strange there, but I didn't care. I was in the world of Wrath, and yeah, Papa Gwyn hits hard because he is not afraid to kill off those characters that you love and do horrible, horrible things to them. But yeah, that is Wrath. So yeah, the last three books I've talked about, House of the Golden Door, Eggle Saga, and Wrath. Three, five out of five stars, me and my three probably favourite reads of 2024 so far. And do I have anything else? Oh, I have a play, and this is called Angels in America. And this is set in America during 1985, I believe, during the AIDS epidemic. So we follow quite a few castle characters. If anyone's watched It's a Sin... It's kind of similar in the themes, obviously, to that, but also in that we follow quite a few different characters' lives and they intertwine with each other. Uh, Angels in America, I loved the exploration of character relationships and this discussion of death. It's very hard-hitting, it's very powerful, and it's very sad as well. It's very moving, um, and it's a very kind of interesting script that does feel... In some ways, it doesn't feel like how we would speak in the real world, but in other ways, it really does. And when it doesn't, it fits in which you'll understand when you're actually reading because there's some dreamlike sequences and there's kind of this jumping between kind of centuries as well at times which at parts took me out the story a bit because it, there's these really serious themes and then there's humor as well which really reflects kind of the scope of humanity but when it was in these dreamlike sequences I it jarred a little bit with me which means I didn't absolutely love it but it's still worth a read, and I watched the National Theatre adaptation, which has Andrew Garfield starring as a central character, and that is brilliant, and they do a really good job of kind of setting up the staging for these kind of dreamlike sequences mixed with reality as well. And so, yeah, another really interesting read for February, and, uh, yeah, one for my module, which is Intro to Drama. And, uh, yeah, that was really interesting, and that is my reads for January and February. I think that is one, two, three, four, nine different texts that I have read. And on top of that, I won't bore you with about 70 kind of academic reading articles that I've read as well, uh, even though I'm sure everyone would like to hear them not. But yeah, my 
it's been a great beginning to 2024 reading wise i've loved kind of rereading the faith of the fallen and finishing them off in 2024 finally continuing with the wolf den trilogy which i've been waiting to do for a year and a half originally i delayed reading book two so that the temple fortuna book three would be released and then that's been released about four or five months so i had no idea what i was doing but i rectified my mistake and then books like heart of darkness and then egil saga just blew me away and so yeah february in particular has been brilliant for reading and i'm looking forward to uh in march i have four or five weeks off from uni and that will be probably the first time I can read books physically for pleasure. So the books that I've kind of picked for pleasure, such as Wrath and the House of the Golden Door, I've listened to via Audible. But the ones that I've read physically, every single text since October I've read physically has been for my uni. And I've enjoyed many of those texts, but I haven't chosen them. And so it feel very nice to have a bit more flexibility in my reading schedule in March, which I will be talking about on the channel at some point soon. But anyway, let me know how your reading for January and February was. Have you read any of these books? What did you think? And yeah, let me know anything else in the comments below. As always, love chatting to you down there about books and anything related to books because i'm a geek but yeah everyone thank you so so much for watching and truth and courage from the brothers gwyn